Fight Corner. All right, welcome back to the MMA Fight Corner. I am Phil Devine, joined as always by Joey Varner, Heidi Fang. In studio today, we have special guest, Ultimate Fighter Tough 17 castmate, Adam Sella is joining us. And right now, back in studio after a quite, quite a bit of an absence, uh, Mr. Billy Mira. How are we doing today, Billy? What's going on, gentlemen? It's great to be back here. Thanks to Dr. Rothman. You couldn't find the building before, <laughs> huh? Now you got the LASIK done and you know where you're going. I get the LASIK done now. Thanks to Dr. Rothman. I have to tell you about that amazing experience. Right here in Las Vegas, I recently had the LASIK procedure done to correct my eyes better than 2020. I don't need glasses anymore, Joey. And I'm telling you, it's like a miracle. Dr. Rothman and the staff were incredible through their whole process. And I urge anyone who's thought about getting LASIK to speak to my doctor, Dr. Rothman. He offers a free consultation and 50% off premium LASIK. When you mention my name, Billy Mira, and 0% financing available, call 702-636-2010. You're going to be delighted you did. Guys, I know I was, and I can see you all clearly now, including you, Adam. You. Adam, watch out. He, he <laughs> looks like he's happy to see you. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I have to say, like, see, today, today, uh, a couple years ago, today, I met Billy at UFC 111. And the first time I met Billy, I don't know how many people know this about Billy. They know Billy from the show, but Billy's a, a comedian, an impressionist, um, many years with the Howard Stern Show. Uh, I was standing online at the bar waiting to get a drink, and Billy is behind me doing his David Lee Roth impression. And I swear to God, I thought David Lee Roth was standing behind me. And I turn around, and it's this guy. Uh, Billy, just for a second, just do that David Lee Roth has a little anniversary present to me. Little anniversary present to you, Phil Devine. I got to tell you something. Look at all the people here tonight. Yeah, baby. Wow! <laughs> now, I, I, Adam Seller, what do you think of that impression of David I, Lee Roth? I, I think I'm too young. I don't even know who David Lee Roth is. Ouch! Ouch. Ouch. Now, right away, I feel dated. Like and that's <laughs> what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about? You know Van Halen, don't you? I've heard of it. I mean, you, don't I know who you, know, you don't know who Van Halen is? I've heard of them. I couldn't tell you a song. Okay, so what, what do you listen to? What's the music that you uh, got jamming? You see like you see the NBA players getting ready to walk out. They got the headphones on. You know, you see fighters backstage warming up. They're listening. They're getting into the music. What is in your iPod? What are you rocking out to when you're uh, training? See, this, this is kind of weird because I don't listen to normal music. Um... <laughs> you listen to abnormal music? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like whales, whales mating calls? <laughs> I don't know if it sounds good. Um, <laughs> do you guys, okay, I've been listening to the script a lot. Do you know who they are? I've heard of them. Okay, what are these, a rap? No, it's like, it's literally like John Mayer type stuff where the dude just sits over the guitar and sings. And it's, uh, it's That's really, what gets you pumped up to fight? I don't get pumped up, dude. Like, the way you see me now is the way you see me as they're putting Vaseline on my face, getting ready to get in the cage. Like, this is... This just is, chill. Yeah, this is me. Like I don't, I don't get pumped up. But uh, it's like he said, this is fun do, for you. Yeah. Do, do you do you take any supplements to help you be chill like this? Like we just recently <laughs> talked about in the last show about uh, uh, the the possible change in the Nevada State Athletic Commission in regards to their policy to <laughs> marijuana. And so I was wondering if maybe you had some <laughs> a, a supplement like that you took to help you stay chill. <laughs> no, I uh, I actually don't really take anything. Um, I know you're confused by these biceps, but uh, they look they look supplement loaded. They're huge. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> no, I actually don't take anything. You know, I'm uh, I'm not gonna say like I'm an all natural eater or clean eater or this and that, but uh, I don't want to get my body used to like taking fake protein, fake you know, fake all that other nonsense. I mean, I don't really know a whole lot about it, but it just I don't think it's really good. Whatever. It's like that Dolce diet. If it didn't exist 200 years ago, don't you don't eat it. Don't eat it. If, if you can't, yeah. if you can't say it, don't yeah. put it in your body. <laughs> yeah, and uh, like Dolce says, don't count the calories. Make, make the, the calories, calories count. count. <laughs> <laughs> boom! You gotta put a you gotta put a Dolce patent pending <laughs> trademark <laughs> boom at the end of any Dolce <laughs> statement. Uh, yeah, I like Dolce. He was a, he was a cool dude. Now, wh what was the interaction between the teams <coughs> in the house? Because uh, um, you know Dolce obviously was with Team Sonnen. Yeah. What was the interaction like? Uh, it, it wasn't bad, you know. We didn't really talk to their coaches except for, like, uh, when we were leaving the gym and they were coming type stuff um, or at weigh-ins or on Sundays we had open workouts. Uh, but as far as, you know, the teams go, we were all pretty cool. Um, you know, I think later in the season they'll show a little issue with uh, – Gilbert or Jamal, I don't know why he calls himself that, but uh, you know we didn't know that. Okay, so off, <laughs> off, off air, you were talking about we were talking to you about problems on the show. And you said you got a problem with Jamal, and I said, well, is that one of Jones' coach? He had Bubba Jenkins. Who's Jamal? And you're like, no, Jamal, the big yoke guy. He lost. He got knocked out of Bubba. I said, you mean Gilbert Smith? You're like, oh yeah, Gilbert. Well, he walks around calling himself Jamal. So us yeah. watching the show, <laughs> we don't know that. We haven't seen any personal references by Gilbert to himself as Jamal. So enlighten us as to okay. the Jamal character. Here's what we learned about. 
we called him Jamal Burt because we didn't know Jamal Burt. We didn't know <laughs> what to say. But uh, basically, when he had his glasses on, he was Gilbert. When he took his glasses off, for some reason, he had a do rag on and his hat was kind of sideways hanging on, and uh, he called himself Jamal. So we were like, you know, what? What's up with that? And I guess when he was uh, in in grade school, he wasn't hood enough, you know, quote unquote hood. And uh, Gilbert's not a tough guy name, so he changed he changed his own name to Jamal, and everybody calls him Jamal. Yeah, did Jamal try to do the rap? Did he rap it all with Kevin? Uh, he, he instigated the rap. He, he instigated. He, it. he tried. Um, that rap battle, they actually cut it down. That they, I think they showed maybe like three or four minutes of it. That was about a 20, 25 minute little battle that they had, and it shows Clint. My bo- Clint's my boy, so I got to kind of stick up for him here. They show him kind of freezing and choking. Clint was going right there with King, beat for beat, word for word, until the very end. So I, 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 I can't let so, them. So we didn't get to see it, but who, who won the battle? Did King win? Oh, King did, yeah. King, King did. Uh, you know, I've heard all these jokes about he's got some uh, weird kind of obnoxious rap video you online. You haven't seen it? You, oh, you got a YouTube. He's on the <laughs> beach. He's on the beach and with bonfires. I, I heard Spencer Pratt's in it. So Spencer I, Pratt I, used to actually come to the cage with him when yeah, he fought in Strike Force. That's horrible. Yeah, that is horrible. I, I hope they do, sh- you know, on the deleted scenes maybe throughout the when the disc comes out. Yeah. They, they do show it. I'd like to see it. And Billy, that's something you've been doing a lot of lately, which is why you've been absent from the studio. Hollywood. Yeah, Billy went Hollywood on yeah, us. Yeah, Billy he went, went all star. Hollywood. You know, <laughs> you, you went back to your roots with the music and, and you've been doing a lot of stuff with ufcradio.com with these musicians explain a little bit about that because it, i think the, it's fascinating what is, you've been doing this is the greatest thing ever because as we all know we're big all of us are big mma fans everybody who listens to ufc radio but what a lot of the fans out there probably don't know is is that a lot of the bands we're also not only mma but we're a big rock music station my favorite type of music metal and old old school metal and a lot of these bands come on and they're big mma fans so now we're giving a forum to these these bands and not only come on and promote what they're doing, what tours they have coming up, what albums they've recorded, but also to tell us about the upcoming fight cards. And I think you guys would be shocked to find out their knowledge, their UFC knowledge is like off the charts, and how some of these guys are actually rearranging shows, if you could believe this, around UFC events, just to go to show you how big the UFC brand is. You know, it's, it really is. It's an incredible thing. So we are going to be the new place not only to talk MMA, but where all the artists come in and they geek out and sit, and we're on the same level playing field and talk mixed martial arts as well. And who, who are some of the big uh, the, the musicians that you've worked with already? Are you, that you look forward to working with in the future? Well, we have. Well, in the future, I got a couple of guys I, I, in my back pocket, maybe uh, some Ozzy guys, some Ozzy Osbourne people oh, are going to be coming right, on right. board. I know a couple of big comedians of mine that are going to be coming as well, but I've, I've had the pleasure, which I'll tell you about in a little bit, working with guys in Seven Dust, Chevelle. I've gotten some really great inside information. Being that they're such big UFC fans, they've also given me some exclusive, which is really great, which, uh, you know, it's, the fans are really going to love these sections and now you can listen to UFC radio and hear us peppering the broadcast with clips of these interviews teasing to the long form interviews which we will be playing eventually on UFC radio that's nice. Awesome. I'm, I'm looking forward to it because it's funny. I was at a concert the other night and I saw Ryan Couture there. I was at the Clutch show here in Vegas. Tell everybody your favorite band, Phil. Clutch, without a doubt. There's no question about it. It's Clutch. <laughs> hey, 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 Adam, do you know who Clutch is? No. Okay, nobody, so nobody knows who Clutch is. I, 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 don't, listen, I don't either, though. I don't either. After the show, I'll play you some Clutch and I will make your life a lot better. <laughs> but but yeah. actually, I, I, wanted to, I wanted to actually ask Adam this, you know, uh, about uh, making life better. It was uh, an interesting comment came up uh, recently on the Ultimate Fighter, or it was actually Dana White made the announcement before uh, an event. Women moving into the uh, Ultimate Fighter house. What are your thoughts on women moving into the house, and how would that have done for you? Wait, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's just be real. Let's. Th- I'm going to jump ahead of this. Let's just ask. In your professional opinion, as a previous castmate, Will there or will there not be fornicating in the house? And if you had had women on the season with you, would you or would you not have been fornicating with them? Uh, I believe that there will be some fornication uh, <laughs> going down. Um, I don't think I would have because I did have a girlfriend while I was on the show, and I'm sure she's going to hear this, so i got to be honest. <laughs> that's the politically and, correct uh, answer. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, uh, no, that's the truth, though. Like, um, you know, I joke around, like, yeah, we were there for a long time, locked up, just dudes. And, you know, I say guys like Josh started looking good. Gilbert's got a big old chest, you know, kind of look at it right angle. Gil- Gilbert, a.k.a. Jamal, got yeah. tingle bitties. Yes, he does. 
Um, and plus, those guys had beds right next to me, so it was like easy to get to, you know. <laughs> easy access, baby. Yeah. So, uh, but no, I I, th- I think women coming in the house with men is, uh, I think it's gonna take some of the uh, like the seriousness of the show away and kind of turn it into a. It could turn it into a circus. Um, I, it just depends on how serious the contestants take it. I mean, well, see, that's the thing, is, and, and I think why we're all in such agreement as to why the Ultimate Fighter is so good this year is because you're taking away that. You got rid of all that. The clowning's the gone. The clowning's it's gone. It, it, it's now. It's time. So I don't. I don't think. I'm hoping that they don't. It's not a joke, and it's not taken oh. as a joke, or that it, and that they get the same caliber too because that's another thing that has changed this season is is not just the you know taking away the the goofiness but bringing in the caliber of fighters they brought in the qual- and, and you know what i noticed i think they lowered the, for guys to get on the show you have to minimum of three fights and i think for women it's only one you have to be one to know okay see I, I i know the requirements for us was three wins or three uh three fights with a uh, winning record you know winning record so um you know and you got to be 21 or something by some age whatever but um yeah, I, I just think women's MMA hasn't really been around for a long time, and I don't think you're going to get top-level chicks. Um, cause, I mean, I can only name, like, three or four, and, you know, I kind of do this. So <laughs> There's there's some beasts out there, you know. There are, uh, the Zuffa grabbed up pretty much the majority of some beasts, but yeah. Invicta has some studs as well. But what I'm more wondering is, logistically, you know, how's it going to work? Because I've been in the house. You know how the house is. Think back to the house. How are you going to separate that house to be to be girl side and guy side? That works. You're not. <laughs> it's 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 going to be difficult, right? Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna use the excuse to say. I think Mayhem Miller said it two at a time in the shower to save water. I think that's gonna be. Uh, <laughs> I love it. I think that's gonna be a motto. But uh, no, I I I think it, I I don't know. I have to wait and see. I don't want to say it's gonna be a joke, but I'm afraid it's gonna turn into like like the real world or something like that. That's what I that's what I, I touched on in the previous show. I said, you know, name one co ed reality show where there hasn't been some 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 fiddle tiddling going on there yeah. under the covers or in the showers. Well what I like is I I get the stupid question of what are girls gonna fight guys? <laughs> <laughs> and then you just look at someone and you're like, You're dumb. Yeah. Just yeah, that's silly. <laughs> I, I think the greatest thing leading up to that I mean when the announcement was made, I don't know if how many people saw one camera angle actually <laughs> just panned in on Joe Rogan's face as Dana was making the announcement. And you knew right off the bat that Joe was not privy to this information beforehand. And as he's making the announcement, his eyes are like, what, what, what? He did a WTF huh? face. Huh? Huh? And he's blinking like... like this is, this is, <laughs> and his, his reaction and what he said to Dana, a lot of people were like, you know, is he playing around? But I think he was 100% serious. And he's like... That's ridiculous, Dana White. You are going to have some problems. Uh, men yeah. and women living together in the same house. It's going to be crazy. Especially, Cats and dogs. Yeah. Especially if a couple of Ronda Rousey's come in. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Speaking of I Ronda don't care Rousey. what your girlfriend or not. <laughs> Speak, a speaking of Ronda Rousey, I, I wanted to give from you, Adam. Are, are you on the Ronda hype train? Uh, I am. I think she's a tough chick as far as a fight goes. Um, I mean, look, she beats every girl she faces, she beats. And then I didn't actually meet her. I think they showed last night she yeah. came and, and, and visited the other team. But um, I didn't get to meet her. But from what they all told us was she, you know, she was submitting everybody. Just she was submitting everybody. Yeah, 185 pound males. This yeah. 135 pound chick. Could you imagine yeah. that? Yeah. Billy, hold on. Did you see Billy? He did He's like, oh, can you imagine that? Like he was <laughs> getting, getting, weird, getting weird. Getting weird. Getting weird. I just said, could you imagine that a girl submitting these guys coming in? You looked excited you? by the thought. Yeah, you looked like you were imagining it. <laughs> I'd like to have her grab my arm. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Arm she can arm, well, well, on, I well kidding aside, she can arm, arm bar me any day she wants, you know. <laughs> See, I, I would not let her do that. I, no. I, I would not. I like would, it hurts. Yeah, at no point would I accept to train with Ronda Rousey. Because wait, wait, would you accept what? To train with Ronda. <laughs> okay, I thought you said something. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. I thought he said get on a train with yeah, Ronda. Like, what? Wait, wait what? Uh, they were we're talking about the house. Want to get embarrassed? That's yeah. why <laughs> you guys are talking about the house for next season again. I don't want to. I don't want to go into that. Um, but um, we do. Um, we do have a few things in going on in the news that I thought was very interesting, um, and I did want to actually get on them in a few minutes. I, we, we do have to take a quick break. I do want to talk about them. We got to talk about GSP. Joey, you mentioned Diaz earlier, so we have to get to that. We got a few things from Heidi and Billy, and more with Adam Sella here on the MMA Fight Corner, streaming live on uh, UFCradio.com. We will be back in one minute. That's what you were saying to take a break, right?
MMA Fight Corner. All right, welcome back to the MMA Fight Corner on UFCRadio.com. I am Phil Devine, joined by Joey Varner, Heidi Fang, Billy Mirror, and in studio today, Tough 17 contestant Adam Sella joining us. Hello. Adam, you've been joining yourself here in Vegas? Yeah, I am. You know, I've uh, actually been kind of treated like a, I don't want to say celebrity because nobody really knows me, but like, you know, uh, training out at syndicate you know john would let me use his car let me use his house if he had a girlfriend or wife i'm sure he'd let me use her too uh, <laughs> but he's, he, you know he's been very accommodating he's good like that he is <laughs> well you won't have to worry about that you will be uh you will you will obtain celebrity status very soon <laughs> you're the, the only guy on the ultimate fighter along with tour to be fighting on a card before the Ultimate Fighter finale, which, and yeah. we talked about this, there are four fight cards coming up this month, starting off with UFC on Fuel, which you will be making your official UFC debut yeah. in, in enemy territory, yeah. well, so to say. But besides yourself, is there anybody on the, this card that you're looking uh, forward to seeing besides yourself in the octagon? You know, I want to see the, uh, the main event. You know, I want to see Musasi and see what he does. Um, yeah. I, I saw I haven't seen a lot of his fights, but I've seen say like five of them and four of them he just he, he came out and won and didn't really like uh do anything spectacular. He just dominates people, but I wanna see if he can do something kinda kinda just to make me say wow. Yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to the Musasi and the Gustafson fight. You know what? I, I gotta be honest, Musasi to me is is almost like Dennis Kang. <laughs> where he was a stud and what I mean by this is that he was this overseas Japan stud that everyone talked about is gonna be so amazing and we've been waiting so long to see his UFC debut and then he comes over and it's kind of like eh. yeah and, and, and I, 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 I don't know if he's gonna be able to live up to the expectations and I'm just looking at the the, the track record the, the past four fights who these guys have both fought the styles you know how it match up um, he's got a tough tough task ahead of him taking yeah. on Gustafson in Gustafson's backyard and stylistically yeah. I think it's a bad fight for Musasi. I know you're. I think you're. You're on the Musasi hype train. I, I, I'm not on the hype train. I'm just a fan of Musasi. You're not on the hype train for Musasi because you're on the, the Lombard. I'm on the Hector Lombard hype, hype train. train. <laughs> but, exactly. but you got. But you have a. You have a transfer at the next station to get off and get on the Musasi <laughs> hype train. I, I, I do. You know, it's gonna. It's gonna be an interesting fight. The whole fight card's good. Sick. Obviously, we talked about Adams making his debut against Tor. Uh, Tor the Hammer. How do, how do you say? Is it throwing? Trung, I, I, I don't even know how to say his first name. We all call him Thor. I don't know if it's Tor, Thor. Actually, Martin Kampman's son is named Tor. And Tor, it's because he's from Denmark. It's like the yeah. Iceland, whatever, the, the slot. I don't know what they're, what it is. But um, that's their version of Thor. Okay. So, so here in America, we added H. So he might as well be Thor. Yeah, because I know, I know he plays off the whole Thor, the hammer, god of thunder type nonsense. But <laughs> <laughs> So you're not buying the hype. Uh, you know, I, I've heard... That was what was kind of crazy about him was like in the house he you don't really see him on the show he's kind of like a ghost but you know uh luke very vocal he's he says he's a tough dude and uh you know the videos i've watched which i really don't watch a lot of video because then it turns into a highlight reel of a guy you're getting ready to fight right which is never a good never idea good. never good. and <laughs> and you know when i go into a fight i worry about what i'm gonna do not what he's gonna do and that's kind of how i've always been um but I've heard he's good at everything, not really bad at anything, not great at anything. Um, so, well, it was funny though because coming into the season, Dana Dana tweeted about a mystery fighter who 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 just is an absolute beast, knocks everyone in fights, sends one fighter into having a panic attack before a fight, and now we're kind of you know we're kind of clued in that that must be Uriah. You oh know? no, that was me. That was you. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting a panic attack just sitting next to you, man. I figured this. <laughs> no, but uh, so we know it's Uriah. You know they they show that of course his 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 fight with you, and then and then now coming in we see Bubba McDaniel's in the previews having a panic attack, having the breakdown yeah. that Dana referenced. But before all that information came out the media and a lot of the fans were speculating that Tor was the yeah. mystery beast and this guy was the guy who that they all thought was going to be the person to win the season yeah i've that, that's what we've heard you know um i'm just going off of what i've heard because I, I didn't train with him i saw him his his fir first fight to get in the house i think went to a decision and they fast forwarded through because it, it wasn't too exciting um and then josh went in there and and took care of him pretty quick uh and, you know, I actually just went down to Tallahassee, trained with Josh for a little bit, and I went six five-minute rounds with the guy, and I was just fine. So I think, you know, I, 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 think, I think I'll be all right. And stylistically, I, I think it'll be a good fight. Um, 
So I'm not I'm not too too worried about him. Well, I'm excited to see that fight, of course. I mean, I think it's yeah. gonna be awesome. But you know who I'm really excited about? And I know he's taking on our boy, our friend of the show, the Bama Beast. But I, I am so excited to see this Conor McGregor kid. Um, you know, Ariel Hawani called him the most interesting guest he's ever had. He's got an MTV2 little mini documentary about him. I watched his highlights. I watched a bunch of his fights. This guy is slick, man. He's a fast, quick, unorthodox southpaw who's not, you know, uh, in MMA, we don't see that high, high elite level of striking. It's where, you, you uh, Adam, you coming from a boxing, kickboxing background, you can attest to this. You don't see the pure fundamentals, the sweet science so often. Yeah. You, know, you don't see guys who, can, who know how to parry, who know the distance of their punches, turn their hips over, can slip and counter, you know, and, and it really, you know, uh, do the right offensive move when you're attacking, you know, counter, yeah. counter effectively or defensive counter, you know, effectively and in, in, in from a sharp technical standpoint. And this kid does it, man. Like I saw him throw like a, a step off overhand, overhand left as a southpaw from the guy's cross and knock the guy out with it. I mean, you know, his head kicks. I mean, he looks really sharp, really, really polished, coming with a lot of hype, but he's, he's taking on the hype train derailer, you know, Marcus Brimage. So, uh, but I, I'm really excited to see what he does in his UFC debut. Yeah, de definitely. You know, like you said, a lot of hype behind Connor. But then, you know, what's awesome is that a week later, you got the Ultimate Fighter finale, which you won't be a part of because <laughs> you, you, you get to fight before all of your, your teammates yeah. and, and the guys on the show. Uh, but, you know, you got the, Singano, the, Tate Zinga, uh, the Tate Zingano match. You got Travis Brown and Gabe Gonzaga. It's a great fight card, but I'm definitely, I have to say, I'm looking forward to Uriah Faber and Scott Jorgensen the most on that card. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. That's going to be a nonstop back and forth scrap, one of those barn burners. The pace is going to be super, super fast. And, and you know what's best about that? They're friends. Anytime you've ever seen two friends fight, they just lay it on the line, man. They just go out there like, hey, let's just go have some fun. And I, I'm really excited for that as well. Yeah, and then the week after, April 20th, um, you know, I'm sure Nick Diaz, I don't know if he will be there with his brother because it's a holiday. But on 420, he will uh, <laughs> he'll be taking on Josh Thompson. You got uh, Benson Henderson against Gilbert Melendez. Such a great fight for the title. And then I know the one that Billy has been looking forward to most of all, Daniel Cormier against Frank Mir. Hey, this month is just starting off the right way. I'm I'm juiced, but I'm most excited to see DC make his UFC appearance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I, I'm 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 on the DC hype train. You know what? Also, I like I like uh, they did have the fight Clay Guida against uh, Mendez, but Clay Clay got hurt. So now stepping in on short notice, Darren Elkins. Darren Elkins has been on a roll at 145. Mendez, you know, one of the top in the world. So I'm really looking forward to it. But all of that, that's all of April. But we still have so much to get to. But also in May, UFC has a fight card back here in Vegas. May okay. 25th. May 25th, Memorial Day weekend, like they do every single year. And this one, again, heavyweight, main event. You have... Heavyweight, co-main event as well. Uh, main yes, event, co -main absolutely. Co-main event, you got Cain Velasquez against Bigfoot Silva. And you got JDS against heavy-handed Mark Hunt. Ooh, Joe Stradamus called gonna, that one. Going to be a blast. But luckily, we had Heidi. Got the chance to sit down with both Junior Dos Santos and... And Bigfoot Silva. And uh, here's a little bit about that. Yeah, basically, guys, I did sit down here with JDS and uh, Bigfoot just the other day. And coming up, we do have a sneak preview of that interview. We will be airing the full interview on Friday. Uh, basically, I sat down with the both of them as Bigfoot Silva is obviously going to challenge Kane for the UFC heavyweight title in the main event. And that's on May 25th again at the MGM Grand Garden Arena. Tickets are on sale now. Also, Junior Dos Santos will clash with Mark Hunt, and that will be the co-main event. But originally, he was slated to fight Alistair Overeem for the second time. But instead, he'll have to face Hunt. Alistair had to bow out with an injury. Here's a little bit about what Junior said. He necessarily wasn't upset about the change, but it sounds like... He's going to move on and face Hunt and has all the best and positive thoughts going into it. No, I'm not frustrated to be uh, facing this guy. You know, I'll start over uh, is, um, you know, I, I have nothing to say about this guy. He pulled out one more time for the fight, so I, don't, I have nothing to say about him, you know. What I care now is uh, about uh, Mark Hunt. You know, Mark Hunt is a really tough fighter. Is a, uh, He got a... You know, he hits very hard, so I have to take care of that, and I think it's going to be a good fight for the fans, you know. So I'm getting prepared in Brazil, and I, I think uh, I'm going to be 100% in the day of the fight. What do you think about Alistair Overeem and him not being your opponent? Do you think that he maybe he's trying to duck you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so, you know. I think, uh, I think this guy, man, uh, 
I, like I said, I don't have too much. I don't have too much to say about him, you know, because uh, he's a joke. He he says a lot of trash things, you know, and he he's a dis disrespectful guy. And book, uh, I think it in the, he, their last fight, Bigfoot Silva, my friend Bigfoot Silva, put him in his place. Yeah. He did a lot of trash talking also before your fight, right? He, he loved media, you know, <laughs> he loved media, he loved uh, uh, talk trash. The, 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 you win the fight inside the cage, not outside the cage. Uh, you don't win the fight, talk, and uh, he's a trash guy. Uh, I have to say, their English is getting so much better. It really is. They, like, the fact that Junior and, both, and Bigfoot are both speaking English it's going to be awesome. I can't wait to hear the rest of it. Um, but during the show, we've been talking about this whole thing with GSP and Nick Diaz. And one thing I want to say, I want to say, hey, first off, congratulations to GSP. Dude got himself a role in the movie. All right? He's going to play uh, in the new Captain America movie, which I think is, is pretty cool. I'm, I'm pretty excited to see it. But what's going on, Joey, with this commission in Quebec? you got to explain the situation to me. Man, so something is rotten in Quebec. Well, first off, it wouldn't be a world champion post fight without the DS camp filing some kind of complaints. And they're not filing one, not filing two. They're filing three different kinds of complaints. The first complaint was about the, the weigh-in situation, which I'll get back to in a second. Then Jake Shields, Nick, Nick Diaz's corner and, and former welterweight title challenger, he filed an objection because he wanted to see the hand wraps of GSP. He said he got a glimpse of them, and he said they looked off. There was something wrong with them. They didn't look up to par. And then the commission prevented him from being, from being able to take another look at them. And the third thing was the post-fight uh, urine, urine analysis. Urinalysis. That's one word. Urinalysis. Um, they, they thought that they bungled that whole operation they didn't oversee it it was supposed to be watched someone was supposed to be in the stall watching gsp as he filled the cup up and they said it didn't go down like that so they're furious about that but more and more in light of the situation the real heat that's coming out is on the nevada state or excuse me the, the quebec athletic commission because Prior to the weigh-ins, about uh, a, a, an hour before they stepped on the scales, a representative from the UFC actually approached the DS camp and said, hey, it's nothing to worry about, something off the record, but here in Montreal, they don't count decimals. So if you're 170.9, you're 170. Don't worry about it. It's off the record. And they just kind of walked away. Well, that's a direct contradiction to how it's supposed to be for all title fights. For all title fights, regardless of the athletic commission, you're supposed to weigh 170.00. You're supposed to weigh the exact weight. In, in Nevada and most athletic commissions for non-title fights, you have a one-pound allowance, and up to a one-pound allowance. So you can weigh in at 170.3, at 170.4, at 170.9, at 171 exactly. But for title fights, it has to be 170.000. And now it turns out the athletic commission hasn't been doing it that way and they're, they're in a lot of heat yeah I, I do remember that happened with nate diaz when he fought benson henderson he had come over he was a pound over he, or, yeah or something silly yeah. a, and two hours later he had to come back it wasn't even a full pound it was like a point nine and that for a title fight it clearly states the fight has to take place at that weight not at whatever point nine they're not the same so but uh Dude, it's crazy. Like you said, if, it, if, if Nick Diaz is involved uh, in a fight, some crazy stuff's going on before, Alex. during, and after. So, but uh, that's a, listen, that's all the time we have for today. It was a big show. I want to thank Adam Salas so much. Thank you for joining us. I really enjoyed the time. I, I was liked what we got, a little backing info on The Ultimate Fighter, and I wish you the best of luck in your well, upcoming thank fight. Thank you. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having me. Uh, also, I'd like to thank Ryan Couture, all right, fighting again, same card in Stockholm. Thank you, Billy, for telling us all this interesting stuff about uh, the music. I'm, I'm all you UFC fans out there, wait. There's some great music interviews coming up. I'm Those looking forward to it. Artists. Joey, thank you. Heidi, thank you. And Dr. Rothman, <laughs> thank you so much. My sight. Thank you. I can see outside. <laughs> I can see your face, Phil. Make sure you, you check him out. LASIK of Nevada. LASIK of NV.com. Call Dr. Ro Richard Rothman. Check him out. You will not be disappointed and don't forget if you drop billy mirror's name our only beer billy mirror mirror on the wall you drop his name you get 20 percent off the whole procedure that's right joe can't go wrong with that well listen we got to take uh we got to get out of here thank you very much for listening to the mma fight corner on ufcradio.com we will see you on friday